Hey everyone, my name is Rick Qualtieri and I return with Tales of the Midlist Author. Um, it's been a while and normally I, give, normally I give the excuse, which is not really an excuse, it's valid, that I've been busy working and stuff. Um, in this case, uh, the excuse is I had to download a new vid video editor, I used it for my last video and I kind of forgot how to use it since then and I've just kind of been sitting here going, I really need to learn that, but I don't really want to relearn it. So. Um, that's just lazy on me. I suck at video editing. I'll just let you know that. Anyway, I am back, and I'm hoping to make these uh, make these a little more uh, a little more regular going forward. Um, I know I've said that said that before, but I'm going to try, um, especially since uh, you know what it is. It's like the author game changes every six months or so. Um, I record a bunch of videos, and then suddenly, like you know, okay, there's really not much to talk about. But then the author game changes, and so now there's stuff to talk about again. In this case, I posted in my Facebook group, Team Twat Waffle, just in case you're curious, um, asking people, okay, you know, what kind of topics would you like me to, uh, to, to talk about on these things? And uh, I got some good responses, which I'll probably dive into uh, at some point. But uh, uh, my friend Chris Fox uh, asked about convention prep. And, uh, you, know, the, you know, Chris Fox, in case you're not aware, he, uh, he probably knows more about indie publishing than... Uh, or he's probably forgotten more about indie publishing than I'll ever know. Um, he's definitely one of the gurus of the industry out there. So the fact that, that he asked the question uh, that he wanted my opinion on was was pretty flattering. Although maybe he doesn't want my opinion. Maybe he's just like throwing something out there. But benefit of the doubt, I'll, I'll, I'll go with the positive. So convention prep. Um, and I figured this is not a bad one for me to talk about because uh, I'm not really a con veteran. I'm, I'm pretty close to a noob. I've only gone to a handful, maybe like, you know, what's it, five or six cons at this point. Um, but since this is a video series for new authors, I figure that probably makes me a decent person to talk about it since, uh, you know, I've kind of do been doing that whole, you know, the, it's, it's not really just mentally there for me yet. It, it's like continually a work in progress, which, uh, you know, which every time I go to a con, I kind of refine a little bit. Um, so let's talk about what to do to prep for a con. And I might make this a two-parter. Um, I might make this a, like, you know, okay, what to do at a con. Maybe the next one, or this might be how to prepare for a con. The next one might be what to do when you're at the con. Um, but, because uh, I think this is kind of an extensive thing. Uh, but first of all, I would say the first thing with any convention is make sure you know you're going. Uh, whether, you're, whether you're getting a vendor table or whether you're a guest, uh, make sure you have confirmation on that. Um, I know I missed out on a convention last year um, because I never got notice about it. Out of, out of like, a week before the convention, they started advertising my name as a guest, and I was like, "Wait a second. Um, because at that point, it was a little too, uh, a little too, I guess, uh, late for me to make uh, preparation and get there. Um, so make sure you do have confirmation. If there are any fees you need to pay, make sure you pay those, uh, whether it's uh, dealer fees, whatnot. Um, take, get that out of the way. This is like you know, easy stuff, crossing your eyes, dotting your T's, which I think I got wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, easy stuff. If you're booking a hotel room, do it as early as you can. Er early is better, um, and see if you can get the con rate. You know, always ask. A lot of these conventions have con rates. Um, truthfully, the easiest thing you can do for a convention is get a hotel at the place where the con is. Um, Therefore, you got to do is really go downstairs when at the start of the day. That is the easiest thing. If you're doing a huge con like Gen Con or like you know a Dragon Con, it's not always that simple. Um, but I haven't done one of those huge cons yet, so uh, so I'm not quite there yet. And if you're a con newbie, chances are you're not ready for one of those huge huge cons either. So we'll save that for maybe a future uh, a future thing. Um, you know, we're trying to get authors and dragons uh, maybe to Dragon Con at some point in the future. Uh, that's one of the pot. That's a podcast I'm on. And, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. But uh, so far, I think medium-sized cons are the biggest I've done. Um, okay. Um, tell your readers. Um, once again, you really can't, like, you know, emphasize this too much. Because, I mean, hell, get the word out. Make sure they know you're gonna, they're going to be somewhere where they can come and see you. Because, uh, you know, that is, that is, for me, the number one thing at a con. You know, getting new readers is awesome. Uh, but meeting people who have already invested in my stuff and just getting them to shake their hands, spend a little time talking to them, that is just the best thing in the world. So I want them to know I'm going to be there. All right. So, you know, hopefully you've done this and you have more than a week to prepare. Um, if not, that's 
bit of an issue, but uh, you know, always try to do this stuff uh, in advance, have a schedule planned out. I would say you never really want to plan. Personally, I don't want to plan anything more than a month or closer than a month out because uh, then that stuff's not going to get done. Um, ask around, see who else is uh, is going. Um, I think one of the best things you can do at a convention is have a con buddy, and this is somebody who uh, who you know maybe is maybe is another author in the deal room. Maybe your tables are next to each other. Maybe you're splitting a table. Sometimes that's good. Uh, some of these places, you know, it's, hey, we want four hundred dollars for a table, which is pretty steep. Um, in which case, uh, you probably want to like maybe have somebody to split those costs. But a con buddy is awesome because you have somebody to watch your table there if you need to go to a panel, if you need to run to the bathroom, or if you just need a break. And uh, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm I'm a pretty trusting soul, and I think con goers are pretty pretty uh, pretty awesome people. Um, you know, like I know I know there's the paranoia. What if I walk away and I come back and everybody stole my book has stolen my books? Well, first of all, in a crowded dealer room, I think somebody would notice somebody unloading your books. Um, but two, I'm like, well, if the worst is that happened, is somebody stole all my books? Um, well, oh well, it's a tax write off, and I hope they enjoy reading them. <laughs> But even so, that's more like to cover your table in case somebody comes and wants to buy something. You're you're, you're not going to be there for a couple hours. Um, con buddies are very useful to have. While you're asking around about con buddies, just ask, in general, other authors if they've done a con because they can usually give you some good tips of hey, how big it is, what it's like, what's the atmosphere like. Um, going in with as much knowledge as you can get is an is a, I mean, it's a it's a great idea. It never hurts. Um, it also can give you an idea of how many books you want to buy, all that stuff. Um, all right, so you ask around, get an idea about that. Um, but all right, now you got to go into that planning phase. You're like, all right, you know, do I have a con buddy? Yes or no? Let's assume for the for the moment, the answer is no. Um, you know, you've asked around, you got an idea about the size of the con. Now you want to design your table, because. Uh, I mean, if you're going there, if you're just going there as a panelist and you're not going to have a table, that's one thing, you know. And some uh, some authors do, they do that, um, which I think uh, could definitely like you know, lightens their load. But we're assuming here that you're kind of maybe doing the full thing. You're you're going to be in that dealer room. Look around, like with your, with your friends of author, either ask around, look around. You can usually find authors usually aren't shy about sharing pictures of how they set up their tables, and. That's not a bad thing because it gives you ideas of what you can do with yours. Um, and then the other thing is, authors are usually also are not going to have a problem if you ask and say, "Hey, your table setup is great. Do you mind me asking you a few questions?" People love to hear that kind of crap. I mean, if they don't, well, they're probably an asshole. In which case, you probably don't want to talk to them. But uh, I mean, that's that's how I kind of figured out how to set up my first table was just you know looking at other people's setups and going, "Oh, that is cool." You know, hey, do you mind me asking what is that thing? It's like, oh, that's that's a vinyl table banner. I got it from 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 here and here. Okay. So yeah, ask these things. Pay attention to those little details. You know, in there, it's you're not just looking at their books. You're also looking at their selling setup. You know, do they have banners? Do they have a a pop up stand? Do they have like you know individual book stands? Do they have one like big book, one big multi book stand? Um, you know, what kind of table dressing? What kind of extras do they have on their table? Is like giveaways. Giveaways are kind of a, are kind of a cool thing. Um, you know, whether it's business cards, you know, that's usually the easiest thing. Uh, bookmarks, magnets. Um, I do pins. Um, we have uh, we have um, you know Toma Bill pins and also Team Twa Waffle pins. Um, the other thing I like to do is uh, you're going to hear this pretty often. Is uh, you have kind of a hook to bring people to your table. Um, a candy dish is a perfect hook because people love candy. You know, they come and pick something up. It gives you a chance to maybe give them your spiel. I don't do the candy dish. Um, I want it to be different, so I do a bowl of cursed dice. I'm a gamer. Most of the convention I'm going to are sci-fi fantasy. There's going to be a lot of gamers there, and let's face facts. If you, you could have tubs and tubs of dice, and if somebody says, here's a free 20 setter, you're probably going to take it. And uh, one of the jokes I do on my Facebook page is like, you know, whenever I do a contest, I take and say I'm going to pull up my cursed dice and roll it. So that's that's my shtick is the cursed dice. You can get a cursed twenty sider, you know, guaranteed to fail you when you when you need it most. Um, but that's my hook to get people to the table. And let me tell you, like people stop and they're like, oh, okay, I'm free twenty sider, you know. Um, the only thing I have to watch out for is sometimes little kids come up they're like, oh, candy, no. <laughs> but anyway. That's 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 my thing is ask around, look at other people's pictures for how they've set up, and decide how you want to set yours up. 
Um, chances are a table is going to be anywhere from six to eight feet uh, wide, um, anywhere from two to two to like three feet deep. Um, deeper is always better because you have more room to do stuff. But uh, you know, you want to get like uh, get a sense for how you can set up both a minimal minimal setup and also like you know a large setup. And also, if you're splitting a table with somebody, you do want to be mindful and be a good neighbor. But ask around and get an idea for what you need, and then start ordering that stuff. Um, Honestly, I'm not a huge fan. I know a lot of people like those giant six-foot uh, pop-up banners. Um, I would only use those if I have room in, in a place because I've seen a couple people or I've heard tales of people you know, just putting them in front of their table and blocking other tables. You don't want to be a con asshole. Um, you know, if you can put it behind yourself, that's great. But uh, they also sell small two-foot ones you can put on your, uh, on your table. So decide what you're going to do with that. Um, I like vinyl. Uh, I, I have a vinyl table flag that I got from my uh, my cover designer Mallory Rock, who who rocks by the way, um, pun intended. And I mean, it's awesome because it's like you know it's heavy duty. It's like four feet wide. It's perfect table height, and it's vinyl, so pretty much uh, it will it will last until it just like you know it will probably last longer than I do. Um, so order those supplies. Give yourself plenty of time because uh, custom supplies, custom and printing can take time. Another thing that takes time is ordering books. Um, unless you really want to pay Create Spaces, or, or in, I'm not sure if Ingram has uh, has expedited shipping, but if they do, um, unless you want to pay expedited shipping, you probably want to order your books at least a month in advance. Um, get that get that order in there. Don't wait to the last second because I did that once with a book signing where I ordered it the last second and Create Space did not get them to me in time, and I just kind of showed up and I was like, hmm, there are no books. Uh, fortunately, nobody showed up, so. It kind of worked out, but uh, it was embarrassing. Order your books um, and kind of figure out how many you want. I like I like to I like to load heavy at the top. So first in series, those always get the most. Um, now, if you have a few books to bring, this is easy. You have two, three, two or three books to bring with you. Um, that's fine. Get the same number of each. You're probably okay because chances are somebody's gonna look and say, "Oh, you have a trilogy here. Okay, let's just give me one of each." Um, you know, if you're going to bring more of the first, just bring a couple more. Um, how many more? A lot of it depends on the con size. I know uh, when I went to Con Carolinas, I brought 30 Bill of Vampires, and then I brought 10 of, like, you know, of the next three books, and then I brought five of the, like, you know, the, the last half of the series. Um, and I sold pretty well on that. Um, but I just came back from Wivacon, as you can see, I still have it unpacked. And it's funny, I kind of did went with the same mindset, but everybody who showed up there was like, oh, I have the first book in the series, let me get the last one. So I sold, wound up selling out of the last like three books in the series. Um, so sometimes it is a crapshoot. But, uh, you know, ask around. You know, I would say worst case scenario is you wind up having extra inventory for your next con or to sell to customers who want like an autographed copy. Um, I wouldn't go nuts and order hundreds and hundreds of books um, unless unless you are certain of your spiel, you're going to a huge con like like maybe Dragon or Gen Con and you know you're going to move things. But, uh, um, you know, kind of kind of temper that. Um, but once again, ask around and you can usually get people to tell you like, to, just to give an idea. And sometimes you got to wing it, you know. I mean, honestly, the worst, like, you know, Selling out of your books is not the worst thing in the world. Um, have contingencies in place, though. Um, get people to sign up for a mailing list. Um, if, like you know, maybe maybe have, like you know maybe give people a way to buy digital copies while they're there. Um, give give people some way to like get in touch with you if you do sell out because uh, you know even if it's not today's sale, it could be tomorrow's sale. So uh, Britain kind of a, shot, a minimum a sign up sheet. Say, hey, give me your email. Once I get home and I'm back in stock, I will send I will send you something, and uh, you know we can talk. Um, if you can get them to pay in advance, that's even better. Just make sure you follow through. Do not be a freaking thief. Um, yeah. So, all right. So you ordered your books. You ordered your supplies. You have an idea how you want to set up your table. Um, decide how you're going to get it all there. Um, Con Carolinas and Wivacon were both within a 10 hour drive, so I just loaded things in my truck, easy as pie, drove it down there, had it done. Um, I went to uh, Contraflow in, in Louisiana, which was a bit of a, a bit longer than I wanted to drive. So what I wound up doing was uh, looking at air, the airline rates to ship my books, and books are heavy, I'm just going to let you know that. Um, decided I really didn't want to pay several hundred dollars to like store it on the airplane, so I shipped them all down to the hotel, UPS. 
Um, I talked to the hotel ahead of time. I asked, do you have a shipping department? They were like, yeah. I was like, if I send stuff there, can you hold on to it? Yeah. And that wound up, work, wound up working. Another thing you do is ask if there's a friend close by. Usually, if you have a friend, they'll have no problem saying, okay, send me your send, UPS me over your stuff. I'll hold on to it and then pop by here the day of the con and uh, take it over. Uh, but you need to find a way how to get it down there. Okay. So that is kind of like, you know, the, the, the things of, of like you know, a mini checklist, if you will. But now the question is, you're probably going to ask is, all right, you've been talking about stuff. What kind of stuff? All right. I usually make a list of things before I go to a convention. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's a, just a checklist to make sure I have it. Um, and I kind of divide it up into four buckets. Stuff that's going on my table, stuff that I need to sell things on my table, personal effects, and anything I might need for a panel. So for a panel, it might be things like, okay, um, like if I'm doing a live Authors and Dragons show, I want to bring down my iPad so I can log into like the Wi-Fi and have access to my to my uh, my character. Uh, if I'm bringing my iPad, I need a charger because a dead iPad will do dick. Um, you know, that's that's an example. Personal stuff. Personal stuff is the stuff you take when you go on vacation. Make sure you have clothes, um, toiletries, razor. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you my uh, my list from uh, from the last con I did. Um, shorts, shirts, underwear, socks, jeans, sneakers, a nice shirt because I I want. I had one day I didn't want to look like you know I normally do. Um, chargers for my stuff and a portable battery. Um, a belt and a jacket too. So once again, that that's just the stuff you pack in your luggage. That's personal stuff. Sales things. Okay, so you want to be able to sell at a convention, um, which means you have to be ready for that. Now, hopefully, you have all your legal stuff done in advance. That's fine. You know, we're not going to talk about that. Um, but first of all, I like to bring some cash with me, bring change. And I don't mean like bring like, you know, $100 and 20s. That's not going to do, do anything because everybody at the convention, I guarantee, has 20s. If you're lucky, they have 10s. Um, bring fives, tens, and lots of ones. Um, you know, and, and it, it's funny. Every time I go to a convention, I'm usually standing with somebody and they're like, I don't want any change. I'm like, all right, fine. You know, so bring a little extra. Um, change is good. I wouldn't worry too much about checks. If somebody still shows up with a check, I'd be like, uh, no. Um, but get a Square or PayPal account because you want to take credit cards. Credit cards are a good thing. And I would recommend don't get like, you know, their free dongle, which just lets you maybe just do a swipe. Get a chip reader. Um, and the, the chip reader might be, might be free at this point. But uh, I know my first convention, I just had the swipe, and it was fine. Um, this, la this last two conventions, I upgraded to a, and I use PayPal, but Square is fine too. Um, make sure you download the app on your phone. Make sure you know how to use the app on your phone. Um, but uh, I upgraded to one that uh, not only accepts chips, but also can do, uh, you know, NFC payments, uh, you know, Apple Pay, Google Pay, stuff like that, Android Pay, whatever they call it, um, which is just like, you know, useful to have. Pe people like options. The more options you give them, the better it is for you because if somebody comes and says, hey, I only have a credit card, and you're like, oh, I don't take credit cards, um, you're kind of screwed, especially unless you have a con buddy who can bail you out. Um, so make sure you got that, you have that stuff set in advance. You know, it's worth, it's worth, you know, the investment of your time or maybe investing, investing a couple bucks in like a decent reader. Um, bring a portable battery so those things don't die in the middle of it because your phone is dead and the, and the, like, you know, the card reader is dead. I mean, you're not making that sale. So portable battery is pretty useful for sales too. Um, that's kind of my things. And like I said, a sign up sheet for future sales. I also bring USB key fobs, um, you know, in case somebody wants to buy digital copies of my stuff. Um, well, technically I sell the USB key fobs the, if they just so happen to have my books on them. Um, <laughs> I, it's just kind of like, you know, and sometimes if somebody makes a big order, I'll just, I'll just do a give, I'll just hand them one. Um, but anyway, that's not, that's, that's like sales stuff, stuff to like complete your, or like, you know, complete the transaction that brings us to the big list. What goes on your table? Well, um, I'll just go through the stuff I have and make your checklist, compare it. 
and just like you know just make sure that uh, and what I like to do is and the, once again this top box here I like to make sure that all of my table stuff at least that fits goes into one box so I have one thing at my table where I can reach in and have all my crap there um, now books are separate you know obviously all my books aren't gonna fit into one box but books are your books are my big thing make sure I have those because if I don't have books I'm kinda dead in the water I want stuff that I can put my books on. You can get away with that. My first convention, I got away without having book stands. I just lean, made stacks and leaned things on it, but it doesn't look as nice. I would recommend just make an investment. Get like a, at least a dozen of those individual. Get at least a dozen individual book stands, and maybe get one like large, like you know, stackable book stand. Um, I've started using that because I think it really looks nice on a table. Make sure you have like you know book stands for those books. Signage. You want people to see know who you are and hopefully you want them to see who you are from across the room so I mentioned before I have a big table banner it folds over the table it says Toma Bill the undead are, are like you know are fun again um, you know it, it it's vinyl so it's pretty hard to kill um, but this is and this is where we get into the weeds ancillary stuff I need to hang that table or that banner it doesn't just attach to the table so not only do I have table hangers but I have twine and scissors so I can so I can attach that like you know that flag this is what I mean about about a list make a list because sometimes you'll forget stupid things um, you know just going down my list I mentioned signage uh, the, the pins I mentioned before I bring my dice my dice bowl um, a tablecloth a tablecloth isn't bad a lot of places will give you will will, will have a, a tablecloth already on there but a table a black tablecloth cloth is useful maybe at the end of the night you just put it over your stuff and it's kind of like that universal concept well that okay I'm closed for business right now you know come back in the morning um, you know I have a, my pop-up sign I mentioned before and then there's little things like you know I mentioned twine scissors tape you know paper signage because I want like you know I want uh, to, to put out a price list um, pens pens are useful because people who are gonna buy your book they want it signed um, I recommend a sharpie pen um, you can bring a full sharpie but that's just gonna eat that's just gonna leak through your paper sharpie pens are cool because they dry quickly they pretty much don't smudge and the last thing I want to do is like you know sign a book and like you know, hand it to somebody and like you know the second they close it, it like smudges all over and it's like oh, what the hell is this crap sharpie pens are the best but what you want to do is, as you like, you know, as you like, you know, if you can at all poss at all in all possibility, and if you have like a folding like outdoor table, you probably can set do a dry run at home and set it all up. Because first of all, you'll probably see. I find I find it maybe takes about a half an hour to set up my table once I like you know once I'm in my groove. Um, but you won't maybe want to give yourself an hour. But set it up at home. And here's the thing, and make a note of those things where you're like setting up, like, oh crap, where's my, where's my tape, or where's my whatever. Do a dry run because that will help you. I guarantee. Um, you know, it is amazing how many last minute items I have almost walked out of the house with. I mean, stupid. I have an Apple Watch. I can't tell you how many times I've walked out and I've been like, okay, I have everything. Wait, I'm, I have nothing to actually. Char I don't actually have the charger for this stupid watch, so it's gonna be dead tomorrow. You know. So, make a convention list, do a dry run, um, add to that list, and pack everything in advance. Don't pack last minute, put everything in, in, in advance. Um, make printouts for, for signage, I mean, for like, you know, for price list. Everything you have, make sure you don't do it last minute. Um, because, and then go through and that list, see what you have packed, and check it off. And uh, you know, hopefully, you are good to go. Um, if you're not, once again, a con buddy can bail you out, but uh, if you're not going with a con buddy, uh, you're on your own. And, I mean, vendor, vendors vendors are, tend to be pretty friendly. So, I mean, if you're like, hey, did you have an extra pen or so, there's probably going to be somebody who does. But it's best to, like, you know, to be prepared. All right. That is my kind of con prep list. Um, you know, obviously, also transport. You want to figure out how you're going to get to the con um, and leave yourself adequate time. I like to, if at all possible, I like to show up the day before only because uh, I don't like to just like, you know, show up last minute on a red eye. That's just me. But, uh, you know, costs and stuff withstanding, sometimes you can't do that. Um, 
And also, and also make sure you like have that set up in advance in addition to your hotel. You know, if you're flying, know it. If you're if you're driving, make sure like you know your car is ready for the trip. Uh, maybe go get an oil change ahead of time. Make sure your tires are balanced. All that stuff. Um, you know, make sure your trip you've paid your AAA. That is my. Those are pretty much my thoughts for how to get to the con. Um, I think we will we will do a second one of these where uh, where we talk about what to do once you're at it. But uh, I think that's good for now. And uh, you know, in the comments, what I'll try to do is I'll try to post uh, you know just my my checklist of stuff that I bring, and uh, you know, just to give you a starter a starter idea of uh, what to do. All right, this has been going on for almost a half an hour. This is a long video, so uh, we'll cut that off now. My name is Rick Welteri. This is Tales of Midlist Author. I do apologize for the delay, and I hope to make good on it uh, for real this time. And I will hopefully talk to you again very soon.